Here's a video walkthrough on how to find the volume of the water tower given on the June exam of 2015. To begin with, uh, we're started. To begin with, they start us off with a blueprint of the cross section of the water tower. Now, when we take the water tower and we cut it in half with a laser, we don't see a cone; we see a triangle. We don't see a cylinder anymore; we see a rectangle. We don't see a hemisphere anymore; we see a semicircle. The big temptation on this question is to find the area of all those and add them together. And that would be a mistake. What we want to do is find the volume of each of those, but look at the cross-section to help us figure out the parts that we need. So let's begin with talking about the formulas. They're, f they're easy to find on the formula sheet. And to find the volume of a cone, it's given to us right on the formula sheet. It's pi r, one third pi r squared times h. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. And the volume of a full sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We don't have a full sphere. We only have half amount of a sphere. So we'd have to multiply by 1 half to find that volume. Let's work our way from the bottom of the shape to the top. Um, in this question, if we put in the radius being 8.5 and work it out on our calculator, we end up getting that the volume of the hemisphere, the bottom of the water tower, is very close to 1,286. If we want to be very accurate, it's a good idea to carry out to four decimal places. The question might say to round, and if it says to round, that's great, but you know we don't want to round too harshly in our question, we want to save a lot of the accuracy and then only round at the very end. So usually a good idea is to keep four decimal places um, set up for each of these little calculations along the way. I mean, what we have to do is eventually is to add these all together anyway, so those little decimals that we round off could come, in, could come in handy later on, and it will throw the accuracy of our question off if we round too soon. If you go to uh, the, uh, the next formula on the cylinder and you put in the radius of the cylinder, which is 8.5, and the height is 25, you just pl plug that into the calculator and it will give you approximately 5,674.5017. All right, let me take a look at the cone and we try to put in the information that we know, and we find out that we are stuck because in this question we do not know how tall the cone is. We don't have the height of the cone. They do tell us that the angle is 47 degrees, and we also know that it's 8.5 from the edge of the water tower to the center of the water tower. So we can use that 8.5 up here and use trigonometry to determine what the height of the cone actually would be. So looking only at that triangle, we have our angle at 47 degrees. The side we're looking for is on the opposite side of it. So that's the opposite side of that triangle. And we know that 8.5, that's the adjacent side of the triangle. The hypotenuse is not something we need. So if we're going to use trigonometry to solve this, we know that we've got the ingredients O and A. So we're going to use tangent to solve the question. How do I know it's tangent? Because I know the abbreviation for sine, cosine, and tangent the abbreviated um, equations are so ka toa. And toa is the only one that has the O and the A in them. All right, best friends with sine, cosine, and tangent is always the angle. They're always next to each other. One can't survive without the other. The opposite side is x. The adjacent side is 8.5. And since we're looking for a side, we can cross-multiply to find out what the answer is. 
So we go to your calculator and type in 8.5 times the tangent of 47, and it will give you approximately 9.1151. And that would be the height of the cone. So there's a little wrinkle in the question that makes it more complicated. So now that I have the height of the cone, I can take that number and place it into the formula. So 9.1151 will go there. The radius, again, is still the same radius for the entire question. It's 8.5. And plugging that into the calculator will give me that the volume of the top section of the water tower is about 689.6510. The total volume is something that I'm after, so I'm going to add all those together to solve the question. I need to find out what the total volume of the entire water tower is. So when I add together the cone plus the cylinder, plus the hemisphere, I end up getting about 7,650 cubic feet. If I keep on reading through the question, it says that each cubic foot is weighing 62.4 pounds. So if the water tower was full all the way of water, it would actually have to be holding back quite a lot of pounds of water because for every cubic foot, for every cubic foot, there are 62.4 pounds of water. You can think about it this way in terms of the feet cubes being canceled, but it's easier maybe just to think of it that every foot, every cubic foot, every cube of water is 62.4 feet. So as it turns out, that's holding a tremendous amount of, of water if it was filled all the way to the top. It would fill up about 477,360 pounds of water. So that's what it would be like if the water tower was filled all the way. That's completely full. It says that the water tower is only filled 85% um, of the way. So I have to find out what 85% of this number is. To find the percent of a number, the easiest way is to change it into a decimal. 85% is 85 over 100, or 0.85. Multiply by 4, 477,360. And that will tell you that the water tower, if it was 85% full, would hold 405,000 pounds of water. Now it says that the water tower can only hold 400,000 pounds of water. So if it was filled 85% of the way, it would not be able to hold that much weight. The, the water tower would spring a leak. So to get full credit on this question, you have to actually answer the question all the way. So this would not even be full credit, all this work right here. Make sure you answer the question. After you get done solving a question, reread the question from start to finish one more time. Be disciplined and make sure you give them what they want. So they want to know, will it hold it? No. It also says to justify or explain the answer. So you have to write some sort of sentence out. Okay. Even though it seems like it's kind of obvious to you at this point, if you got this far, say that it won't hold it, and then explain why. 85% um, full is over the 400,000 pounds that it's capable of carrying. And that is how you complete that question from start to finish.